be happened. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Frank Allen Iverson got suspended by the Big Three League. Have you ever been suspended? I'm Frank Isola. Nope, but there is a reason I'm in this seat today instead of Tony. Oh, the he's, been, came down. he's been forced to go on vacation yes. before. Forced. I need someone to force me to go on vacation. No, you don't want that. Yeah, come on. You don't want that dead leg in your tomorrow. file? Maybe tomorrow. You're not a suspension kind of guy. No. Neither am I. No. We're no. pretty mild, man. We don't rock the boat. That would be on your permanent Tony record. takes the boat and just tries to throw <laughs> people out That's into the right. water. Welcome to PTI. Tony is out today. So I'm pleased to be joined by our great friend from the New York Daily News, Frank Isola! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now I'm definitely wow. not coming back. That was a Friday cheer right there. <laughs> we begin with Colin Kaepernick. Kind of. ESPN's Diana Rossini is reporting that Ravens coach John Harbaugh and GM Ozzie Newsom support signing Kaepernick, but have met resistance from their owner, Steve Bishotti. The Newsom issued a statement a few hours ago saying that his owner is not blocking any such move and that the club is still figuring out what it wants to do. Rossini also reports this isn't the first time an owner has told his football people no in regard to Kaepernick. Frank, what do you make of all this? What do I make of all this? John Harbaugh is there to win football games. Ozzie Newsom is there to win football games. The owner is there. Uh, yes, winning is important, but making money is important. Placating sponsors is important. So I think originally this was floated out as a trial balloon, and I think they're probably getting back some positive feedback, probably a lot of negative feedback. But I think if you're the owner and you believe, if you listen to your coach who you obviously trust and your GM, he's been there forever, you trust them. And if you feel like Colin Kaepernick can help you win games, then you sign him. You worry about everything else later on down the road. Well, I mean, this is an interesting case of church and state, as we used yeah. to say, uh, where you get the, 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 the coach whose job is to win tonight, yep. the GM whose job is to win tomorrow, and the owner who's going to decide these issues. And I, I think, I'm sure, what is happening here is Steve Bishotti's trying to take the temperature of, of a certain chunk of Maryland, where Baltimore is, of course, that supports his team, and Northern Virginia and D.C. Yep. And there are a lot of people associated with the military in this region, this region, which is sitting about 35 miles from where Steve Bishotti and, and, and Harbaugh and Newsom work. And they got to figure out, how many people they are perhaps willing to offend, to what degree can they placate them all. It's a complex thing for the owner. Football people want to win. Yeah. They're like, Kaepernick, we, we got an injured quarterback. We got a guy who used to start and who threw 16 touchdown passes to four picks a year ago. Let's get him. And the owner says, wait a minute, I got money issues I got to deal with here and image issues. Two, mo two most important people on a football team, coach quarterback how much of this is they don't you know they want to tread lightly around joe flacco and i feel like you he think has some flacco pressure might have something to do with it well he's hurt he hasn't right been very now. good since super all it takes is a poor week one You're and right. then the questions will start You're about right. hey, it, it will. colin kaepernick starting okay week bottom two. line let's see what we think here you think they're going to sign colin kaepernick i think they are going to i think this has been out there too long eventually it'll happen i, I, I think i agree with you all right folks last night the red Sox and indians produced one of the more entertaining regular season games you'll ever see Christian Vasquez's three-run walk-off homer gave Boston a 12-10 win at Fenway. Really, the Sox had no business winning this, grand, uh, this game. Chris Sale gave up five runs in the first two innings. Craig Kimbrell uh, blew a save. And, of course, everyone's talking about the great catch, courtesy of Cleveland's Austin Jackson. Look ding, 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 there's your winner. All right, so, Michael, Whatever what's the, the most remarkable is. aspect? Of this wild game. I've seen Kimbrel blow saves. I've seen Chris Sale start to. And we've melt. seen great catches hey, hold before. Hold on, hold on. I've seen, I've seen Chris Sale melt down when we get to August. You know, I've seen balls fly over and off the monster. <laughs> I ain't never seen no catch like that before. Great catches, yes, Frank. That catch, I thought in real time, and I, I, it wasn't real time. I feel how great the catch was, and I, the game was great. Because on the Cubs broadcast, they were talking about that game, which is why I switched <laughs> over. But of all the things that happened, and I think Bob Costas was calling that game with Jim Cott, and even Costas said, that, that's as good a catch as you're ever going to see. That is on the short, short list, top five. Greatest catches of all really? time I've ever seen, of all time. If the wall's a little bit all higher, time. he probably doesn't make that catch. Okay. Here, here's what I like about it. The Red Sox, they jump back in the first place by winning that game. By a half game. In a game where the, the guy that's going to win the Cy Young, Chris Sale, <laughs> well, gives up seven runs. He's going to be Were the American. Were you paying attention he's last the, night? He's the American League Cy Young. He's going, well, he, he does this every August and September. He's, he's he goes allowed, like this. He's allowed to have a bad game. He's done and it they every year. Get, he's allowed to have one bad game. And his team still won his start. All right, but he gives up seven runs, yeah. okay? In his last five starts, he had only given up 
Five rounds. Seen this, total. Been there, done that, seen this. And then you have your closer. <laughs> and then how about this? They should have lost the game. They Mitch Moreland strikes out, reaches first on a wild pitch. We've seen the then you Red get the Sox home win these kinds of games for 100 years. We've still never seen that catch. The guy has to go into the bullpen. He's like a flying Walinda. Who does that? Should it, should, it, should it be a home run if he lands I, over the fence? You know what? That is a great question. I don't if think you it don't should stay be. outside of the bullpen, yep. if you don't stay in the field of play, should it count? It's I, certainly not a I touchdown. I could make the argument. The NFL would call it no catch. No, they in baseball, they it's come a up catch. with a rule for exactly. it. Exactly. The walk-offs, we, we saw, we've seen all that other stuff <laughs> in Fenway before. That catch, man, that, that goes down as, as an all-timer. all, all, all -timer. In the wake of the Houston Astros being relatively quiet before the trade deadline, star Astros pitcher Dallas Keuchel is anything but. Keuchel told reporters, quote, I feel like a bunch of teams really bolstered their rosters for the long haul and a huge playoff push, and us just kind of staying pat was really disappointing. I'm not going to lie, disappointment is a little bit of an understatement. Close quote, ouch. Keuchel, like everybody else looking at the Astros, probably thinks adding a bullpen arm was in order. Frank, not often do you hear a no, player weigh him publicly don't. quite like this. You don't, but pipe down, Dallas Keuchel, okay? Your team is 69 and 37. You're 11 and a half games up in the American League, the best record in the AL. I understand your bullpen has not been good in July. Your team since the All-Star break is 9 and 7. It's still a huge lead. I'm and by the way, you did add a pitcher, Francisco Liriano. was lifetime who, starter. And, and you're going to put him in the pen thinking to get out, out of the box. To get out sounds lefties. creative. And I get what they need is Lance McCullers. He's on the DL to come back. And Dallas Keuchel, you missed two months. Yeah. So think about what the record is, and that's without you pitching. So... I'm not ready to panic just yet, and I understand. They were in the market for Zach Britton, the closer on the Baltimore Orioles. There's still another deadline. It's kind of like the fake deadline, it July the 31st. Deadline. You have the waiver, deadline, the waiver deadline, so they can still go out and get bullpen help between now and so August 31st. And they better do it. Here's why. Because their bullpen since the All-Star break, 6 5 it's incredible. 7 And for the entire season, it's 4 5 3 ERA, which is 23rd in Major League Baseball. So they need some help in that area. And look, he's looking out at not just the teams in the American League. So he's not just looking at the other division leaders. You've got to be looking at the Dodgers and the Cubs with their additions. And you're looking at the Nationals. And you're saying, wait a minute, these teams, those three teams went out and got the pitching help they needed at the deadline. We didn't. We're just going to sit on our prospects, well, our, our glamorous prospects. And that's it. Because this has been a team that everyone has looked at as the model of rebuilding, building with young players. Yeah. At what point do maybe you trade off some of those prospects to get those a other teams proven do it. player, they especially it. a pitcher? Yeah. And this, is, this looks like their year, does it not? Absolutely. At least in, in the American League. They're running away with it. That's why I'm not going to panic like you and Dallas Keuchel. I'm panicked. <laughs> All right. Believe it or not, we have breaking news about a great player who's set to leave his legendary teammate because he wants to be, of course, the guy on his own team. Of course, we're talking about Neymar, oh. who's on the verge of leaving Barcelona Wait a minute, and Lionel Lost Messi Ford. to join Paris Saint-Germain. The move includes a buyout clause of 222 million euros, making the Brazilian the most expensive soccer player in history. All right, Michael Wilbon, are you okay with Neymar saying goodbye to the biggest club in the world to establish his own legacy elsewhere? Yes. Yeah, and I know where you're going with this. This is where we both have to go. Uh, I'm okay with Kyrie Irving saying there it I'm is. ready to leave Cleveland. And I know it appears selfish. It is about power and control. And I don't know if it's about earning potential. You can earn a lot of money wherever you are if you're winning. Yep. But it's certainly about sort of control and being perceived differently, not just among your peers, but among everybody from advertisers to the, 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 the sponsoring the, the fans, the patrons. I'm okay with this. I mean, Neymar is 25 years old. And he's saying, you know, I'm tired of this being this guy's shadow on this team. He's always going to be in his shadow. And maybe going to PSG, suppose he takes them, and I understand that it's no a, league in big France it's a is big like risk. the other leagues you're talking about yep. in the world, the top leagues yeah. in the world. But okay, he's willing to take that risk. Is he good enough for him? Yeah. Well, Isn't he, he a top 10 player absolutely, worldwide? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think if you do, if you take the Portuguese translation of Neymar into English, it's Kyrie. Because yeah. that's exactly <laughs> kind of what's going on. But Neymar is a terrific player. He doesn't want to be in the shadow of Lionel Messi. Now, by going to Paris, like you mentioned, you know, you're talking about the league in England, Italy, Germany, Germany all obviously, being better. it's like the fifth best league. So it's kind yeah. of like saying, I'm okay with winning a division title in the NBA, and I'm going to sacrifice winning the big thing. It's, it's going to be much harder for him to win. I'll say this. I, wa I was at one of their training sessions when they were over in the U.S. Right. He looked detached from his teammates. In one of the practice really? sessions, he got in a fight with one of his teammates. Well, maybe he's ready to go. So he absolutely but Here's is. the question. Here's the other part about this. It's different from Kyrie. 
When you're playing for Brazil, you have played for Brazil, and I know they yeah. got humiliated as a team, yeah. although he wasn't in that game in the World Cup final. I mean, there's a certain expectation you Absolutely. have of yourself, and everything in your culture says you have to win at the highest level. Yeah. Kyrie maybe maybe not in the AAU culture, which produced him, and he goes to Cleveland and didn't win before LeBron came back. I don't know if they're exactly equal, but they are. And, they remind you of one another, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Guess who makes out really on this deal? Neymar's Every, agent. It, it was his father. His dad. Smart. Thirty-six million dollars reportedly. <laughs> Daddy's gonna make a lot of money off of this one. Smart that's, man. That's amazing. <laughs> Conflict of interest. Frank, it's like we're in the 1990s. What with Michael Jordan in our show, Back to Back Days. <laughs> At his youth camp, Jordan surprised some people with his all-time forever basketball ranking, at least part of it. Quote, would I rank LeBron over Kobe in terms of best of all time? No. There's something about five that beats three. Now, he may be better than that, but Kobe won five championships, LeBron three. Close quote. Frank, Jordan doesn't need analytics or new math to grasp that. <laughs> Are you with him? Uh, I know he's your boy. But Michael, pipe down. If we're going to start comparing championships, then that means we're putting Bill Russell ahead of you. Well, Jordan does that all the time. Okay. He puts As the best. He's, he's, he, my, you know. Michael Jordan knows that everyone thinks that he's the greatest player I'm of all time. He doesn't say that. What happened during the NBA Finals? Every Leading into the NBA Finals, it was who's better, Michael or LeBron. And the younger generation now who hasn't really seen right. Michael play says, well, it's close. This is Michael Jordan's very smart way of saying, well, wait, before you say, is LeBron better than me, he's not even better from someone from his own generation, <laughs> Kobe Bryant. Michael is smart when it comes to this stuff. He knows how to work. That it. is a very calculating approach oh, to yeah, this. Oh, he's not calculating. I'm not going to dispute any of that. <laughs> exactly. But I'm going to say this, having had a lot of conversations with Michael Jordan about Kobe on the way up. You know what Michael never resented? He never resented Kobe being compared to him. Yeah. Never. And as you know, Kobe loved that, and he would call Michael all the time, as in all the time. And there was a relationship there that Michael Jordan did not resent. And so people might think that. By the way, Kobe Bryant is the second greatest shooting guard of all time, period. And he patterned his no game question. after Michael. And he, he did. LeBron still has a ways to go, and I think that this conversation could change. But I understand if you're going to – look, the culture that those two grew up in – decided to quantify these relationships and standing yeah. by using championships one. So they were both the victim of that and the beneficiary of that. And I understand this conversation. But, but Michael believes that Michael believes very strongly in Kobe having nothing I, to do with an agenda and LeBron. I, lo I love Kobe Bryant. To me, LeBron is the better player. What Michael probably sees a lot more of himself in Kobe with yeah. the mental toughness. I agree. Yeah. That's probably End of seen. games, late, you know, late, late away game jumper, situations. They both played for Phil mouth. Jackson. Yeah. A, a, a lot of Five a lot championships. Of there. Should have been eight if he hadn't retired. <laughs> probably play golf with you. <laughs> Let's take a break, not me. <laughs> Coming up, how concerned should the Nationals be about Max Scherzer's neck? And did Charlie Blackman's catch make up for this dreadful, and we mean dreadful throw? Looks it's like Josh throw. Jackson it's on the throw. mound. Not that bad. Close. Josh Jackson. He's actually went forward. Horrible. Somebody, somebody in the the interruption is brought to you by Wendy's new bacon queso burger and chicken sandwich. Available for a limited time. Hey, the promotion. Ah, uh, time for toss up. Let's see what I soul is made of. Oh, what boy. is first? Toss up more memorable. Charlie Blackman's catch or his throw? Did you see this combination? Uh, Blackman, <laughs> the Rockies All Star center fielder makes this great catch in the ninth inning. was not catch of the night. Because we, well, we know well, what you catch say of the these catches was. happen all the time. But this catch was really nice. But he had a throw. He had, he had a throw that, I mean, look at this. It goes straight into the ground. I mean, what what is the deal with that? Yeah, it's the throw, Michael. First no. of all, he double clutches on the throw. He, well, he didn't want to get rid of it. He didn't want to make an he, error. Well, he's got Jose Reyes on third. He's not going to throw out Jose Reyes. No, And then not. he throws the ball into the ground. He leaves a divot there. Would you pick up that divot or clean up that divot like no, you do in the golf course? No, I have course? a caddy do it. That is a terror. Why is he double clutching? By the time he double clutch, let it go. Jose Reyes is in the dugout. Why Why but if you let it go and maybe the ball is slippery or something on it, and he sails it over the catcher's hand, over the uh, uh, over it's, the. It's so We're in the no excuse league. You're making a lot of excuses for for an all star. There's plenty of excuses in that league, even for all stars. <laughs> What's next? Who should feel worse about their night, Max Scherzer or John Lester? Right, this is complex. Stay with me here. Lester <laughs> winds up hitting his first career home run 
Uh, he also strikes out his 2,000th bat early, the 25th left-handed yep. pitcher ever to do that. His team wins, even though he can't go long enough to get the win, five innings in a 16-4. Laffer, Scherzer gets a pain in the neck because he slept on his pillow wrong. <laughs> he has to come out after a 1-2-3 inning. He didn't even get to the second. He's going to a chiropractor. They don't know whether he's going to make his next start or not. I mean, who should feel worse about their night? Scherzer, because you've got an injury. Lester Absolutely. wasn't injured. It's amazing, too. Two uh, American League guys now in the National Actually, League. Scherzer hit his first home That's run. Right. Also. Oh, and I out. wonder if that had something to do with it. Well, you know but it's always the injury. He yeah. said he kept his head down in the strike zone because he couldn't move his neck. Yeah. How about that? And then, now they're trying to make it say, oh, it's not a big deal. Every injury, especially a big-time pitcher, well, but you, is a big deal. He's only been on the DL once, once in his career. But better that than an elbow or shoulder. Or, you, you, Dallas or Keuchel missed two months because of a, a neck. I and now he won't stop complaining. I think you pick get up a better anybody pillow. at the deadline. Just call the... The front desk at the four seasons to get a better pillow situation. What is next? Toss up. Whose side are you on? Mike Matheny's or Yadier Molina's? Oh, this is complicated, too. I mean, Matheny goes out and he says he's taking him, uh, Molina out of the game. Because he wants to rest him. him. Because he wants to rest him. Says he's tired. He yep. by implication. And Molina, of course, has to go to Instagram. You yes. can't just go to the manager's office and say, shut up. I'm, I'm angry at you. you got to go Instagram. But Matheny, the problem is, he's one of those guys you know, views on sports and life. He wrote a book, you know, Mike Mustini's manifesto. That's <laughs> where did he go to college? Michigan. He's a Michigan that man. That automatically <laughs> puts me on Yadier Molina's side. What about you? No, uh, I don't have Molina's side, but I will say this. If I'm Rob Van for the commissioner, I'm saying this is so great because this is what all the NBA players do. Yes. They go to Instagram, to Instagram or YouTube to, to fight their battles, and this is Perfect for baseball. You know what Malik did? But he, he put Jose Okendo's Jose Okendo. picture up there with him. Who would have been the manager, yes. but he had to have knee surgery. That's his guy. So he's taking a big-time dig at Mike Matheny and his manifesto. He can't be with a Michigan guy. Michigan man. He wants an Okendo man You are a Northwestern man right now. Absolutely. All right, so we, no Michigan people. We'll what is go. next? Last one. Toss-up. Is Joey Gallo having a good <laughs> season or a bad season? Joey Gallo is having what I'd like to call a Dave Kingman season. He's hitting 202 and needed two home runs yep. to get him up above the Mendoza line last night. 27 home runs, 18 singles. There, this is not unprecedented. Dave Kingman, who I mentioned, Rob Deere. Yep. My man Kyle Schwarber, who's going to hit better average in his career, is doing that right now. This happens, you know, every few years. You got uh, guys who just swing and miss, but when they connect, it's going along. I, I was confused at first. I thought they were talking about Joey Gallo in Brooklyn. That he's in a different kind no, of business. Don't him on the this show. Joey Gallo, because he swings, he don't <laughs> miss. <laughs> he swings a baseball bat. Yeah. Uh, 130 strikeouts on the season. He strikes out 38 percent of the time. But you know what? In baseball, you're looking for these guys that can hit the long ball. Believe yes. it or not, he has some value, even though it's feast. Or and on base, he's like an old school on base, player. He and Schwarber are above 300. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. So who, who, who knows what to Earl make? What's next? Oh, that's it. See? We're done. See, we're so Joey excited. Gallo has him scared. Toss up. <laughs> Joey, please. Don't, don't listen to him. Let's take one last break. Still to come, Carmelo, your boy, describes his current state of limbo in terms of some won't believe. Uh, more NBA. So what sort of expectations should we have for Steph Curry's performance on the web.com tour? How come you're not in that? I want another toss-up. What's next? Come on. This should have been some Paul in toss-ups. Good or bad? <laughs> Thoughts? Time to get happy, people. Happy 22nd birthday. Chris Stapp's poison. Yeah. This kid has been involved in so much drama. It seems like he's been around New York as long as Woody Allen. No player in his first two seasons has both blocked shots and hit the three like Porzingis. Frank, is he good enough, though, to be a true number one in the NBA? He's got the drive, the work ethic, the skill, but he has missed 26 games in two years. That's what concerns me. Say happy birthday to him in Latvia. That would be durable. No, I'll let you do that. Happy birthday, Chris Stapps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Happy anniversary, Antoine Walker. On this day, 12 years ago, you were the centerpiece of the largest trade in NBA history. Walker was dealt from the Celtics to the Heat in a transaction that involved 13 players. Grizzlies, Hornets, Jazz were also involved in the deal. And believe me, it included a lot of big-name guys at the time, and it had zero impact on the league. But he did get a ring. He won a ring with the Miami Heat. He got a ring out of that That's right. I'm glad. One of your Chicago, Chicago guys. Chicago guy. And his stepdad, I know. He's doing a lot of good work right now, too. A very melancholy, happy trails to Era Parsegian. The former Northwestern and Notre Dame coach died at the age of 94. Notre Dame was coming off five straight seasons without a winning record when the Irish hired Parsegian away from Northwestern. 
The good people of South Bend took notice, of course, that Parsegian was 4-0 against the Irish. And his Notre Dame teams went on to win two national championships while compiling a record of 95-17-4. and He'd taken over a Northwestern team after an 0-8-1 season led them to the school's only number one ranking in history, Incredible. in school history. After retiring as one of the great coaches ever, he then had a second life establishing the Arab Parsegian Medical Research Foundation, which has raised more than $45 million. Yeah, and, you know, really, college football royalty. And people of my generation think of Arab Parsegian as a football analyst, CBS yes. and ABC, and he was terrific. A lot of, he that. was great at he really everything was. that he touched. Frank Leahy, really. New Rockney, Arab Parsegian. Yeah, that's a list, as we say, Not a very bad. short and great one. No errors today. We're running out of show. We're going to run through the big finish. Carmelo says he's at peace with his current situation. Do you believe that? Yeah, Carl? maybe. He wants to go to use him, but I will say this. When he was asked about Phil Jackson today, he smiled. So what does oh, that tell oh. you? All right, Michael. NBA referee Danny Crawford is retiring our good buddy after 31 seasons. Your thoughts? Yes, dad of Drew Crawford. A, a terrific NBA referee worked the finals. We saw him and the family. Five. He's Last so good at this. Why is he retired? we got to talk to Danny. And he's in great he's shape. Too young. Yep. Too young to quit right now. The big three leagues suspended Allen Iverson for one game for missing his last game. How's he going to feel about that? Wait, wait. So you mean Allen Iverson misses the game in Lexington but still gets to go to L.A. and Vegas? Ah, man. Yeah, man. He really got cheated on that one. Got his money's worth. Dominic Easley of the Rams for his ACL is out for the season. Big loss? Huge loss for a team with a defensive holdout and a team built around that terrific defense. Last one. Steph Curry tees off tomorrow morning on the web.com tour. If you can make the pass. I don't think he will, but he wants to hit that first tee shot down the middle. That's all he's worried about. He nerve. All right, folks, we're out of time. Thanks for watching. I'm Frank Isola. Even for the great Steph Curry nerve. Good luck. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the app or Apple Podcasts. Canada. PT.